Okay, let's do it. So we're actually recording too here so we can share some of this screencast. But we're going Excellent. through just assessing where we stand. So so let's kind of back up. So Jonathan is br brought up to speed, but Andreas, talk to us about, so you're in a master's program in leadership and uh, where, where you're studying collaboration. Is that is that where what the situation yes. is? Yes. Um, yeah, right now it's uh, a collaboration, how we can use collaboration for open source ecology to spread the impact, uh, basically. Is that, uh, a, are you actually doing OSC, like you're focusing your thesis around OSC's work? Um, right or? now, well, it's after I spoke to you and, and we, uh, you mentioned that you would like open source ecology to, to be part of the... Um, thesis then um, and also so I'm trying to change focus a little bit to go from a network perspective and looking on a lot of different ones and focus on one specific and see basically what challenges you have and what works and what doesn't work um, in order to to both help other organizations which are similar to you to see what works and also maybe to see what can be be done better um, uh -huh. so so basically assessing our ability to collaborate like focusing from the collaboration aspect or like more like management of the organization or which which aspects so yeah so it would be how collaboration is can be used to reach your your goals and your missions okay uh, so what processes is there in open source ecology when it comes to collaboration excellent excellent so that's that's highly relevant to to what we're doing because that's one of the central questions we're trying to answer we're trying to say what are the limits to open collaboration can we actually get measurable results for innovation happening um, through the open source collaborative channels and especially with a mission not just like innovation for the sake of innovation and innovation for the sake of making a better world or transformative regenerative development of the planet so uh, I want to I want to just fill you in on a long-term vision here. So <clears throat> we're in it for the long haul. Right now, we're doing the Global Village Construction Set as a platform for collaborative development, where we're testing the different product development methodologies and and team development methodologies and how we use very low low cost or or free or highly accessible tools so that that process can be scaled to anybody. Uh, that's why we're very adamant about not using tools with paywalls so for example someone elsewhere might not be able to pay for that we want to open the process up to anybody and right now we're working a lot on on product development we're also working on agricultural topics of land use regenerative agriculture broad-scale agricultural plant out using our equipment which is something we're getting into open source GIS is another recent area uh, but pretty much as we go along developing all the open collaborative tools and the, the good part about that is that when we go forward like this, we can tap all the open source existing communities, which are typically very friendly. So we found that one of the strong points is that talking and engaging open source projects is a really fruitful way to go forward. Like, for example, FreeCAD, um, which will enable access to high power CAD, which there's always that trade off. Well, FreeCAD is not developed well enough, then we're forced to use other tools. but Recently, we've been thinking a lot about how, well, if we put enough energy behind the open tools, they will get better. And that's part of the, the culture that we're trying to create to, to develop those open tools, that there, that there are no barriers to collaboration. Because we're seeing that if a tool is closed like SketchUp, uh, there are little limits, little subtle, subtle ways that this affects the process that altogether is not, it makes it not super collaborative. Uh, just to give you an example, if, you, if somebody does AutoCAD for the brick press for us, that means we're absolutely relying on that person as a bottleneck or anybody who has AutoCAD for that work. And we cannot uh, do the continuous development that this process requires. And if it's, it's constant iterative development, then people are locked out if the tool access is not there. And the way to the tool access is also the fact that we want to train people. Uh, so in that same process, develop our community as we go forward. So that's kind of an overview of how we develop things. Now, as far as the long-term goals, we are looking to first set up OSC here, the development facility in Maysville, Missouri. Within 10 years, our, our goal is to have a fully autonomous operation which generates its own technology and ecology and a working campus for training people, for training others. 
So basically an immersion curriculum training program for people to be producers of the new economy, of the next open source economy. And our plan after that is, I mean, just roughly speaking, for within 20 years to have a widespread global replication of this. And this is where the organizational learning and management, basically the capacity to execute comes in, in that if we want to develop a number of these chapters worldwide, or OSC facilities, OSC campuses, that means we have to have a, a documented set of standard operating procedures of how this happens in the open source. That's that's basic overview. Jack? All right, well, great. Uh, thank you. I just uh, have a few, few um, questions. Like you mentioned that you want to create a autonomous um, autonomous place mm -hmm. at uh, mm -hmm. Missouri. Uh, like, what do you mean with autonomous? Is it yeah. um, autonomous? With economy, like it yeah. can fund itself, or is it with food? And yeah, I mean, by autonomous, we mean that we demonstrate that all the needs for a modern standard of living, i.e. modern civilization, can be obtained on any parcel of land on a scale of 40 acres. So that means we're producing our food, our energy, our technology of local resources as much as possible as an experiment to see what are the limits to that because of the extreme potential this has for demonstrating that Oh, well, prosperity can be had anywhere where rocks, sunlight, plants, water, and soil are found. We don't believe in scarce resources. We believe that if we open technology completely, we can live um, with prosperity, including re regenerating our environment as well. So the, the campus concept is uh, we want to phrase it not as, a, as an intentional community, but as a campus, like a university campus where all these functions happen from productive activity to education activity to people living on site, kind of like a university campus, which is like a microcosm of real society, except it's for real, except we're actually using local resources and running a full economy from local resources on that parcel. So it's kind of hard to explain because, I mean, it's kind of beyond the thinking of many people, how they see, well, they see that, oh, you need the whole world to be able to do that with global supply chains. But we're saying, um, how can we optimize that for for local hyper-localization so that we have a chance of prosperity when there's many, like the autonomy refers to the, the ability to people for people to interact on an equal footing. So if we're not dependent, if we're fully strong, that's how we can have, have good relationships with others, with other countries, with other regions. Um, because ourselves we can provide, we're not desperate to steal or plunder for, from others' resources. But uh, the autonomous operation is important in the sense that we want to show an experiment that that can be done in a feasible, manageable way. So that's, a, that's an extreme case of, of organizational uh, integration, organizational management. How do, you, how do you manage such an entity? And we're thinking that the, the prototype scale would be the village scale of about 200 people in this facility uh, as a highly replicable model, though we might try with fewer people uh, as well and pretty much gather data points on what it, what's the minimum set of tools and technologies and people and natural resources required to, to live a, a normal, prosperous life that's also in peace with, other, with others. All right, so basically you want to produce some kind of um, post-scarcity society prototype? Or yeah, yeah. As you yeah. mentioned, um, you want to move away from the scarce resource kind of way of thinking. Um, yeah. And also a lot of, um, you spoke about equal, like um, everyone have the equal opportunities to create their own um, resources and, and basically. So uh, you want to be able to recycle uh, materials, but yeah. also knowledge yes. in a local place. Uh -huh. uh, and also something with, with power. Uh, what You spoke a little bit about equality. You mentioned something about the equal footing. Um, oh, yeah. Is that part of your mission or vision, or is it... Uh, uh, it's one of the... Our mission is to create the open source economy. One of the things I'm describing, I believe, are are byproducts of an economy which has open access to information and tools and techniques um, and various sources of capital, like nine different forms of capital, uh, not just financial capital. All right. Great. So maybe let's back up a little bit and maybe um, talk about, uh, so with respect to, okay, so one part of this, before we go further, is 
in this phase, we're noticing how significantly we need to train other people and bring people up to speed to the techniques and tools that we use so that uh, in our development work, which, which still boils down, I mean, we don't have much of the technology yet. It's a, a lot about development. So in the development process, how do we generate the leadership uh, leadership capacity for project management? That's one of the things. And I just wanted to ask you, like, as, as we go forward here, how, how you could help us with that, just to answer that, that question? Yeah, um, I'm thinking we can have parallel, maybe not to confuse too much the collaboration, uh, process with the leadership um, development because I see uh, collaboration can be an important part of leadership but um, maybe we can like I can also on parallel and after also the thesis finishes uh, work with you and send some initial prototypes of uh, what I think is important um, for um, basically what's already out there and maybe you can take a look at it and we can talk a little bit of, of what's needed and what's special for your case. Mm -hmm. As far as within the scope of the thesis, what would you so so your timeline on that is what what's what's your timing on the thesis? The initial timeline is to finish that one at, at in June, basically. Uh, it can be extended up till up till August, mm -hmm. depending on how long it takes. Uh huh. So June, June or August, and that that scope of that is what the studying the collaborative aspects of OSE. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. So what what are we doing currently, and what could be done better uh, yeah what are you doing currently for collaboration and and how how is it related to your vision to your mission and what you want to do mm -hmm. and a tangible product that that people can benefit from within our community is to would you see that that could help people understand basically it would be a good analysis of what we do currently so that whoever joins the project they can see oh this this is how it can help explain things to people is that one of the goals, or? Well, it's also to see, um, maybe to make yourself aware of certain things, because when it comes to, to there are quite many other organizations also out there which have similar goals uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to yeah. cradle to keep cradle resource flow. When it comes to um, there is some who focus more on the ideology, like um, Venus Project have a lot of similar thinking, but they. They tend to be more community discussions and not so much hands-on. And then there are other ones who mix in different parts, but um, some mix in even more philosophy. And then maybe it becomes hard to collaborate with them uh, because you don't want to be associated with certain types of philosophies, perhaps. So it's basically how to relate to the community of organizations who have kind of the similar goals, but um, at the current stage maybe don't talk so much to each other and see how 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 actually they can connect with their differences and with their um, similarities in a way which can yeah. benefit everything uh, or benefit your, your common goals. Mm -hmm. uh, so a little bit like what I'm curious of is um, for people who want to maybe replicate what you are doing. Mm -hmm. um, like one big step, for example, is that you managed to get a piece of land. You managed to get um, 40 acres or how much it was um, of land where yeah, you can actually can build yeah. your prototypes. Mm -hmm. uh, and for some people, that can be a quite big, big step. Uh, so, for example, that would be a good starting point. If, did you have any kind of um, collaboration in order to get this piece of land? Or was it something which you paid from your pocket or... How come that that these initial stages, who who choose and why do they choose to actually help you to get this piece of land? Uh, it's it's out of a pocket. That was that was uh, that's how it happened. And but the land issues, I don't think that's the the critical. I mean, absolutely, you want to have a land based experiment. But land, there's plenty of land out there. I don't. I mean, I think people don't really recognize it. But I mean, in America, at least, you can get land at two thousand dollars per acre. But if you don't have land, you can definitely work with others who have similar goals and create various arrangements as long as you have long-term access to that land. But definitely, uh, because all resources come from land, you have to start with understanding what the land is, what land is, and how it provides various resources. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so so because I think in Europe, for example, maybe land is a bigger issue. Mm -hmm. If you want to, um, if we would buy land here, it would be cost probably more than it costs in in America, and also in if you want to replicate it in other places, um, which is even more dense, like Holland or maybe England, then it would become an issue. But um, do you have any? So maybe if you have any other product which is an example of where you actually engage with someone, one. Um, we're engaged with so the recent collaboration, say with uh, Luca Mustafa, um, who is uh, working on a CNC torch table. He's working on open technology. But I mean, the way collab. I mean, there's many different levels of collaboration. Like the whole land thing. There's a bunch of people that are within the the regenerative agriculture movement who are farmers who have land and and want to apply some of these things. But but for now, a lot of the development happens with just individual projects where we collaborate on technology. Recently we're developing an open source micro tractor, we're working on an aquaponics greenhouse which can be applicable to sit to any home as a as a additional structure. Uh, the point to, to emphasize though is we focus on technology because that we're we're at the stage of providing enabling tools that have economic significance so that people can can generate livelihood from that. And that's that's our unique point. We're saying like to develop the open source economy um, and to do that we're focusing on specific uh, projects that are already doing stuff that's in the set like for example if someone someone else helps us with the CNC torch table well we don't have to do that development they're already working on it we can collaborate as long as they're open source and that's exactly what we're, we're doing so a lot of different projects we gravitate to if they've got substantial open source technology that they're willing to share and our our process is okay if you are willing to share just about anything that's economically relevant we're interested in working together the global village construction set has 50 tools but it also spans just about all sectors and there's a lot of ancillary technologies that are absolutely relevant like for example the aquaponics greenhouse is an integration of many different features but it doesn't specifically well it might have say something to do with a CB press as we can build walls with that or maybe some pumps and you know electric motors, generators, or renewable energy, or a bioplastic extruder for glazing that is tangentially relevant to all of that. But we're looking at uh, the scope of what we're trying to do is a lot of different tools and techniques that that become people-centered technology. So our goal is to find anybody. I mean, the main requirement for anybody is literally: are you simply working openly? And, now, and you have to be very careful about it because if it's NC or non-commercial, that doesn't work for us because we're interested in having anybody be able to make a living off it. If you have an NC clause on your so-called open source work, then that doesn't work because people cannot use that to, to sell things. So the culture is radical openness to, to sharing economic power. It's basically distributive economics, sharing economic power is the name of the game and anyone that plays that game is our friend and we typically have a lot to talk about uh, on the development methods on just simply sharing technology and so forth is it mainly with individuals that you collaborate with like um, you mentioned the cnc torch table was that something which which someone worked on before is it something which you started and then you started to engage other people uh, uh it's it's individuals typically within organizations, startups like like Luca Mustafa. He's you know he's a Shuttleworth fellow as an example. There's Jan Lachetti who works on the Velocar project. Um, typically, whoever we work with, they have or like I mean our favorite collaborators, people like Joshua Pierce from the Michigan Tech Open Sustainability Lab that's at the university there, or Jeff Mo from the founder of Lulzbot open source 3D printer company or laser soar from an open source laser cutter project those are some of the names we work with and also engaging with various permaculture people recently to to host permaculture workshops um, or workshops on for example open source GIS so so a lot of times it's it's engaging leading communities of practice who are open source and typically it's working with certain individuals at those organizations since typically there's leadership people who, who are at the helm that we typically talk to. Now we also run just with, with ordinary folk. Uh, we have design sprints that that anybody's invited to that and those are all collaborative 
development techniques where at that point we're just executing on 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 collaborative protocols like for example we're developing the open source technology pattern language icons in the graphics working group and to that anybody's invited you all you have to do is learn some basic inkscape skills and then you can collaborate with us so we're trying to develop various protocols uh, which are defined to the point that somebody can just read that get schooled on it and get get an, a tutorial and then they can work with us on a certain project mm -hmm. um, so but if you work with these individuals for example mm -hmm. Joshua Pierce um, is it do they also associate somehow create connections to to the rest of our organization so that you or is it more mm -hmm. that someone from a happens to work for another organization and uh, they don't bring their organization into the collaboration so much or is it does it stay stop at, at that one organization or do they somehow um, meet with uh, with other partners from uh, I think Joshua he works with appropriate.org yeah. right? um, yes are there other people behind that ones that manage to get involved in the process or does it stop at the leading figure no, I mean it's it's typically when it's a leading figure that might be just a just a channel, and typically we want to get connected to anybody uh, who's working with that group, like Apropedia or their, uh, Joshua's 3D printer guy or uh, whoever's working on the open source induction furnace there, things like that. I mean we try to reach out to whoever's doing work. I mean if the leader, you know, we might just start with the leader or or start with anybody basically who displays proactive engagement and open source culture so um, we're open to to doing now as far as that leads to capacity what capacity do we have and this is this is the the drive right now to develop leadership within our teams so that we can spawn a number of teams working in parallel like for example Jean Baptiste is leading the, the open source graphics group um, but we have limited capacity with that so one of our main thrusts right now is to develop leadership for people um, so that we have a number of parallel projects happening and that of course requires project management from people on our team. Mm, all right. Um, so you're just curious like for example when it comes to, uh, I will stick a little bit to your connection to, to Apropedia and 3D printer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to get some examples fleshed out a little bit. So when it comes to Joshua Pierce, is did he contact you or or did you contact him? Um, oh, like I do mean, you remember the first time you you uh, you talked to him over mail or something? No, first time was yeah, I contact him because I saw he was doing relevant work on, and that time it was about uh, well, just in general, I I actually. Well, actually, the first time I contacted him was regarding doing a presentation at Michigan Tech University because I wanted to meet him and visit his lab. So that was in 2014's college tour that pretty much we invited ourselves to speak there. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it quite often you who contact other people? Or is it sometimes that other people contact you and say, hey, I want to work you? It it's goes think? both ways a lot. I'm very proactive in reaching out to, to various open source projects. And then there's many people I get. My inbox is full of various collaboration requests and everything. So it's it's both. All right. But does it become overwhelming with a lot of, um, if you reach out to so many and you get a lot of responses? Oh, well, yes. Since 2011, we've been inundated with more more offers than we can ever process. And that's, once again, the the reason why we're getting serious about leadership development so that our capacity grows to handle that. We still cannot handle what we have on our plate. We can't. I mean, we've got so many offers, opportunities, we simply have to choose what we do. And then, you know, sometimes that's that's an issue when people are like, you know, we don't have time to follow up or we lose, you know, we drop the ball on something. We don't have the capacity. So that's that's the the goal of building up the team, leadership team. And we're doing that actively by, uh, I mean, we're actually beginning working on, on seminars to train leadership, to train leaders. We're getting into the developing our chapters to, to run in parallel as project leaders for a particular project they take on. Um, so we're trying to develop the tools. A lot of it revolves around the protocols of how you do engage the process. If that protocol is clear, at best, you can have an autonomous process. And we've seen that. For example, because we defined the protocol for how you build the icons 
for pattern language, the open source technology pattern language icons, we've seen that a number of those icons were, were done autonomously by other people who just said, oh, you guys are working on it. They saw it on our website and they get involved without us even having talked to them. So, so there's different ways to get involved and, and you can optimize for both channels where, where it's transparent and open enough that collaborations can happen from many places, but also we, we, are, we drive certain focused development in working teams. Mm -hmm. All right, so actually you want leadership also in order to be able to, to kind of distribute the, um, the connection to others, uh, to, to distribute also who, um, who networks, so it's not just revolved around one person. Right. Like you see, it's kind of like a, a key in order to, because if you're the one who always go out and, and connect with other people and it would become overwhelming, then at the same time you also have a big community, as you said, and and as if I understand you correctly, you will you want to give this community the, the tools to do some of this work, and some of the communication tools, some of the collaboration parts as well. Absolutely. That's.